Praise God. Okay, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about Kanye West, and I'm going to finish this thing up. Uh, it, the title of the series, this is, I think, the fourth uh, teaching that we've had in it. it. The title of it is, Is Kanye West for Real? Uh, everybody knows the story behind Kanye. He was a, a, a rapper. Uh, he had some very questionable, uh, uh, dirty lyrics uh, in the past in his uh, in a song. He's a rapper. Uh, he even came out several years ago, not several, but a few years ago, uh, and and came out with this. Uh, I am Jesus, Y E E Z U S. Uh, and he, uh, it, it, with, with I am Jesus, he was uh, talking about putting himself on the same level as God and all that. Uh, and all of a sudden, now he says that he is a uh, born-again Christian. He wants to live for God. And uh, uh, but because of his past, uh, there, there's a lot, of, a lot of people that are saying, man, we know your, about your past. There's no way that you can be saved. You're, you're, you're false. Uh, but listen, we, we can't dis discount him because of his past. Uh, if that was the case, uh, we have to discount every single person in here. I use the example uh, about the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul killed Christians. That was, that was his job. That's what he did. It was a life's mission for him. And uh, he ended up being one of the most powerful people in the whole New Testament. And uh, so, uh, you, you know, is, is Kanye's, con uh, Kanye's conversion for real? Uh, we don't know that. Uh, uh, the only person that knows that is God. Uh, Kanye may, may not even know. Uh, remember uh, uh, Jesus said uh, the day is coming that I'll put the goats to my left hand, I'll put the sheep to my right hand, the sheep are the good people. And he said I'll say to the goats uh, uh, you know, depart uh, when I was hungry you didn't feed me. Uh, but finally he'll say depart from me, I never knew you. They, they'll say didn't we prophesy in your name? Uh, didn't we do miracles in your name? And so those are church people people that thought they were saved and, and uh, they will be the goats. And uh, so Kanye may not even know if he's saved or not. Uh, only God knows. Uh, but I will tell you this. We will give him the benefit of the doubt. Uh, uh, or uh, I will. You have to make your own decision. Uh, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and I will pray for him. And uh, we prayed for him this morning and, and prayed that his conversion is true. Uh, but I will tell you this and, and we'll, uh, we'll, the scriptures are going to bear this out tonight. Uh, Kanye has uh, no business really taking the pulpit right now. That is not biblical. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to back that up with scriptures this morning. Uh, Kanye needs to uh, kind of drop out of sight a little bit and he, he needs to get discipled uh, before. I mean, it's okay to give your testimony and things like that and of course make his music. Uh, but as far as taking, taking this, uh, the pulpit and preaching uh, he, he needs to kind of back off and, and, and not do that. And he needs to really watch out what he's, what he's saying uh, because uh, I, I hate to use this word. It sounds so ugly, but I don't mean it to be ugly. The Apostle Paul said, I don't want you to be ignorant. And is what he meant. He didn't call the people ignorant, but just uh, unknowing. Uh, and, and a lot of times uh, someone like Kanye, a new convert, can say stuff out of ignorance and, and can lead people astray, uh, all right? But like I say, we want to give him the benefit of the doubt. Uh, and, and, and so to not, uh, this morning, uh, put on your seatbelts because we're going to go fast because I want to end this, uh, this series, all right? Now, real quick, uh, we started off this series. We used uh, the example of Sodom and Gomorrah. And, uh, you know, things in the Bible, uh, I explained to you, represent uh, different things. Uh, if you look at Lot, uh, uh, who was uh, Abraham's uh, nephew, uh, Lot moved outside of the most sinful city uh, known to man at the time. That was Sodom. Uh, then we saw where he moved into the city of Sodom. Then we saw later on where he was sitting in the, uh, uh, the gate, which meant that he had some authority uh, in there. Uh, and, and so I, I told you that Lot in that story represents the church. The church has compromised. Uh, the, the, this is the most compromising church in history. I'm not talking about this church. I'm talking about the church. Uh, in the history of the church, this is the most compromising era uh, that, that anyone has ever seen. Ever seen. Uh, used to, uh, as a matter of fact, the church would be the stand one. The, the church was the moral, uh, the moral standard. The, the church would, would say, this is what you're supposed to do. This is what you should do. This is what you shouldn't do. Uh, and, and now we've even got the world telling the church that they shouldn't be doing that. If you remember Lot, uh, uh, the, 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 men in, the men in the city of uh, uh, Sodom even told Lot, you don't belong here. 
You don't belong here. You shouldn't be here. Uh, even they knew that. All right. And uh, Lot knew what he was doing. The Bible says that Lot was a, a, a righteous man. And so we, is what the church needs to do is get back. Bonnie said it, uh, I think, this morning. Uh, we, uh, we need to get, the church needs to get back to their first love. And, and we need to stop the compromise. Listen, the church needs to tear down the stages and, and all the bright lights and all this kind of stuff. And, and, and the church needs to build the altars again. And, and you know, uh, it just, it blesses me so much to see uh, half the church come down here during praise and worship and, and even the young men and, and young, the, uh, the teens and the preteens and, and the uh, young people come down here and humble themselves before God. Uh, and, and I'm telling you, the church has got to get back to that. And, and uh, I use this uh, uh, example too. Kanye, I, I would love for him to get into a small church. And, and uh, you know, the small churches are the ones that are carrying the message of Christ right now and the love of Christ, not the big mega churches. And uh, the thing that I hate about Kanye is that he's an entertainer in the secular world. And so the church wants to get him. It's not his fault, but the church wants to get him uh, to make them look good. You know, you want to rub, you want to rub shoulders with, 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 with the guy that everybody likes, you know. And, and uh, uh, I got a word for that. But with the young men and uh, the, with the kids in here, I don't want to, y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, but let's, let's have another, uh, go a little deeper in the review. Uh, the first thing we have to look at uh, is that, are we allowed to judge people? Uh, we started on that phase of it last week, last Sunday, and we're going to finish it up today. Uh, because I tell you, the church of today uh, says uh, they're, they're immediately ready to embrace Kanye West. And, and we shouldn't do that. We should be a little, bit, little, a little bit cautious, okay? If you remember, I told you that when the Apostle Paul uh, uh, had the encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus, then he, he, he left for three years and was discipled, and then he came back to the original disciples, and they would they said, no, we're not going to accept him. No, it was based on his past. He kills Christians. We know who he is. And, and if you remember, uh, Barnabas had to come in and say, hey, I'm vouching for him. Uh, see, and so uh, Kanye West, we, we need to approach him uh, with an attitude that I am going to earnestly pray for you but we're gonna we're gonna watch with a little bit of caution. We're gonna see how this how this is gonna turn out. All right, but continue to pray. Uh, and, and so, are we to judge? Because the first thing the church will say is, "Well, you shouldn't be judging people." And and, and uh, anytime you bring correction in the church, uh, you know, uh, uh, or or tell somebody, "Hey, brother, uh, sister, you shouldn't be doing that." You know, well, you can't. Why are you judging me? The Bible says, "Don't judge." That's not what the Bible says. The Bible doesn't say, "Don't judge." All right. Uh, and, and just to review, uh, Matthew 22, uh, uh, 23, Peter rebuke Jesus. When Jesus said, it's almost time for me to go to the cross, uh, Peter pulled him off to the side and said, Jesus, you don't need to be saying that. And, and you know what Jesus told him? Jesus didn't say, well, you know, I want to be politically correct. Well, I don't want to hurt Peter's feelings. You know, what, you know what Jesus told Peter? He got up in his face and he said, get behind me, Satan. Matter of fact, I've got it written down here in verse 23. It says, uh, Matthew 22, verse 23. It says, uh, get thee behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you, observe, uh, for you desire not the things of God, but the things of men. Jesus told that to Peter right in his face. And then Galatians 2, 11, uh, Paul had to rebuke Peter. Poor old Peter, man, he was always on the end of it. You know what? I, but I mean, you know, I can relate to Peter. He was, he was just making it real, you know, and he'd mess up. Uh, but, but at the time that, that Paul had to rebuke Peter in the book of Acts, uh, uh, the gospel had already been uh, uh, given to the Gentiles as well as the Jews. And Peter was sitting with some Gentiles. And when some Jews came in, he got up and he went and he sat with the Jews instead of the, is what, what, what should he have done? He should have told the Jews, hey man, come on over here. Y'all sit with us and everything, see? But it's what he did was he went over. And, and uh, the, the Apostle Paul, the way he even uh, 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 worded it in Galatians uh, uh, chapter 2, verse 11, he says, I, he was telling the group, he says, I had to rebuke Peter in front of you all, see? And so he, it's okay for us to judge. I'm not saying it's okay for us to judge. We need to judge. And it's a hard thing to do. I understand that. It's a hard thing to do, but we have to judge. Uh, we have a, a whole book called Judges. Matthew chapter 7, we talked about the goats at the left uh, 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 and the, the sheep to the right. Uh, you know, God, Jesus is judging them. Matthew 21, uh, Jesus went through the temple and turned over the uh, tables of the money changers uh, with anger made a whip and started whipping those people, uh, you know. Uh, let me see what I've got here. Uh, we started off with 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 
uh, and Galatians chapter 1, where uh, the Apostle Paul talked about uh, another Jesus, another spirit, uh, uh, another gospel. Uh, and, and so there's a fake gospel out there. And so uh, anyone, not just Kanye, anyone that just pops up on the scene, we have to really be careful and we have to make sure that they're preaching the right things. Uh, matter of fact, First uh, 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 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, uh, <coughs> they had a... <clears throat> a young man that was uh, in some sin at the church at Corinth and Paul hadn't made it there yet, but Paul heard about the sin and Paul wrote a letter, a very scathing letter in 1 Corinthians and, and he told the church, he said, I can't believe that this is going on in the church of, of, of Jesus, the church of God. I can't believe this. And, and he said, and I, the thing that bothers me the most is, is it bothers me that this is going on, but it was what bothers me the most is that you're putting up with it. See? And that's what the church is doing now. We're, we don't want to call anybody out, a false, a false teacher or a false apostle. We don't want to call out a false message. Oh, God, no. I don't want to judge. See? And, and so the apostle Paul is saying, I, I'm ashamed that you're putting up with this. And you know what he said? Now, now, listen to me. You can look this up. These are his words, all right? He said, even though I'm not there, I have already judged this person. I have judged him. And he said, put that person out of the church. Have nothing to do with that person. Turn that person over to Satan and maybe he will repent. That's pretty strong language. And what the church at Corinth probably said, oh, well, we're not supposed to judge him, Paul. Paul said, I've already judged him. Get him out of the church. Get him out of the church. And have nothing to do with him. And then Paul went on to explain in that same letter to the, to the church at Corinth. He said, we are to judge within, which means that we are to judge each other in the church. All right. The Bible says that if we turn a sinner from his evil ways, that we have done a good thing. All right. And, and so the, and the Bible lays out. I'm not going to go into it. The Bible lays out how we should go to someone in the local church that is sinning. You have to have two witnesses and go. And, and, and if you approach them, uh, you know, and if they turn from their ways, uh, then, then that's a good thing. You can drop it. But there, there's a progression to that. But listen, Paul said that we are to judge within the church. That means we're supposed to judge within the local church. We're supposed to judge that. Listen, the Bible says to to test the spirits to see if they're from God or not. And, and, and so if there's a false message coming out that is sending people to hell, why wouldn't we want to expose it? Why? <clears throat> I can't understand how we get this spirit where we don't want to expose a false doctrine. It, it just, it just, it blows me away. It blows me away. But anyhow, uh, Paul said that we're supposed to judge within. Now here's, here's where people get about we're not supposed to judge. Paul said we are to judge within, but we are not supposed to judge without. And what he's saying is we are not supposed to judge the, the people that are not saved, the non-Christian. Paul said God will judge them. But we're supposed to judge each other and we're supposed to judge the messages and, and the messenger to see if it's real. All right. Uh, churches are ready to say that this is awesome. Uh, they say don't judge. Uh, but I'm telling you, uh, write this down if, you, if you're taking notes. First John 4, 1, I gave it to you last week. Test every spirit to see if it's from God uh, because many false prophets are in the world. Uh, people are going to uh, hell because we're silent and we don't want to, we don't want to, uh, uh, we want to be politically correct and we don't want to uh, uh, expose anybody. People are going to hell because we don't protect the pulpit up here. Uh, let me see. I think that's all we've got. Okay. Open your Bibles. Uh, the first place we're going to go, we're going to turn to several uh, uh, scriptures, but I'm going to go real fast because I'm going to finish this thing today. So let's start with 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. I've, I've used this uh, uh, sermon. I just, uh, I just uh, uh, last Sunday, I just uh, ran over it with you, but I want you to see it. I want you to see it. I'm going to read it real, real fast. Raise your hand when you're at 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Okay, now hang on to your hat. Here we go. Here we go. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication is not so much as named among the Gentiles. So he's, saying, he's talking to the church. He's saying, you got somebody in the church that's worse, worse than a sinner. All right? And, and it says, uh, uh, look at verse 2, and you are puffed up. And have not rather mourned that he has done this deed might be taken away from among you. For verily, as absent in body, but I pres present in spirit, I have judged already. Ooh, we're not supposed to judge, Paul. Yes, we are. 
And, and, and why? Here's one of the reasons, stay with me, as though I were present concerning him that he has done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together in my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ to deliver such one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. Your glorying is not good. Don't you know that a little leaven, uh, uh, leaven leaveneth the whole lump? You know what he's saying? If you don't get this person out of the midst of you, he is going to corrupt other people. And he is saying, cut it off. Get that person out of there. Well, we don't want to hear that, but we, that's, it's the truth. It's the truth. All right? And it says, here it comes, verse 7. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven. Get the person out of there, that you may be a new lump as you are unleavened. Look at verse 8. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the leaven. Uh, 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 got all that. Where is it at? Okay. Uh, what a, okay. Jump down to uh, verse 11. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother, if he be a fornicator, covetous, an idolater, a railer, a drunkard, an extortioner, such as one, don't even eat with that person. These false messages and these false ministers, you shouldn't have anything to do with them. And sometimes we say, well, you know, I know they're, they have, they're a false teacher, but they got some good stuff. Listen, don't listen to them because the bad stuff's going to come into your house just, just right along with the good, what you think is the good stuff. All right. And look at verse 12. For what, this is, this is the, the foundation of whether we should judge or not. For what uh, have I to do to judge them also that are without? So he's saying I shouldn't judge those that don't know God, those that are not Christian. Uh, do not you judge them that are within? See? And look at verse 13. But them that are without, God judges. Therefore, put away from among yourselves that wicked person. All right. Okay. Uh, here we go. Are you ready? Turn over to, this is going to be our foundation scripture, and we're going to go real fast. So the question at Matthew uh, chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. And so the question is, when we talk about Kanye or anybody else, should we judge? You know, we need to lay this, uh, lay this issue to, to, to sleep right now for once and for all. And listen, don't, we, we don't, we don't, we don't, you think we enjoy, uh, or some, anyone that takes the pulpit, you think we enjoy standing up here and, and saying that person is a false prophet, that person is a false teacher, that is a false man. We don't get joy out of that. But listen, you, you have to expose it. You have to. You know, how can, how can you let that go on and not expose it? All right, you got your seatbelts on, or you're at Matthew chapter 23. So, this started about 20 years ago, I guess. They even came out with the bracelets, WWJD. Y'all remember that? What would Jesus do? And so if we're going to if we're going to look at an issue, we're going to look at what Jesus told us to do and what Jesus did in his actions. All right. Are you ready? Now, this is Jesus talking to the church leaders. Verse 23. And then spoke Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples. The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. The scribes and the Pharisees are the church leaders. They'd be like the pastors and the, uh, uh, the prophets and all that. Uh, verse 3. All therefore, whatsoever they bid, you observe uh, uh, that observe and do. Uh, but do not ye after their works, for they say and they do not. And, and so he's saying, they're telling you, here's how you're supposed to live, but they're not living that way. All right. Verse 4. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and they lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them uh, with one of their fingers. Now listen to me, listen to me. Send me a thousand dollars. God is not going to bless you. Paula White, who, who, who is the, uh, uh, the, the, the woman that is the, the, the leader for the president, she goes in, what, I forget the word, whatever you call it. And she just uh, came out, I, can't, I wish I would written it down specifically what it was, but it was like, if you send me $69, then God will bless you, and if you don't send me that $69 or whatever it is, you're not going to get blessed. See? And so uh, here, you have a couple that's trying to pay their mortgage or trying to pay their electric bill, and they see this lie on TV, and, and, and they, uh, con, uh, you, you think it's conviction that comes on them, but it's not. It's guilt from that person on TV. Uh, you know, and, and, and they take all the money that they have and they send it in and then they get foreclosed on in their house and all that. But see, they put heavy burdens on you, heavy burdens on you. I don't have that kind of money, but they're telling me that I'm not a good Christian if I don't send in that money, so I have to send it. You're putting that burden on them. And that's what they were doing. Verse 5, but all their works they do 
to be seen of men. They make broad their flatteries. Now, flatteries was a deal that uh, 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 it worn on the head uh, and on the left arm, and it was uh, uh, made out of leather and, and had scriptures in it. And is what they would do is make it big, uh, uh, you know, to the, the flatteries to, so that everybody could see it. It made them look holy. Verse 5 again. But all their worst they do to be seen of men. They make broad their flatteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. Pageantry. Pageantry, uh, you know, uh, with the long uh, trains on their robes and all that. Um, uh, six, and they love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets to be called of men. Rabbi, rabbi, rabbi means master. And, and, and so, uh, listen, uh, it, it, you know, when I was in the Marine Corps, uh, if an officer was within eye view of you, you better acknowledge that officer and, and sir, yes, sir, and you better salute and acknowledge it. And, and that's just the military Okay, but they're saying uh, that that when they're in the marketplace, you know, uh, they want you to go to them and say, Master, Master, uh, Rabbi, Rabbi, you know, oh, oh, you're you're so holy, you're just so holy. Verse eight, but be not, but do not call, but be not you called Rabbi, for there one is your master, even Christ, and all are brethren, and call no man your father up on the earth. For uh, one is your father. Now, now it's not talking about your biological father. I hate to say this, it's talking about religions that have a, have, have, have a, 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 a person in a position and you are to call them father. It's like pastor, you know. If you want to call me pastor, call me pastor. Uh, let, me, let me just say this. Y'all, you, everybody in here knows me personally and you, you know that I, have, I don't have a, a, a big ego. You know that. But I like it when the adults address me as pastor or Pastor Bonnie, Pastor Allen, Pastor Kim, because it teaches the young people to respect not me, but the authority, the position. You see what I'm talking about? See what I'm talking about? When I was growing up, uh, you know, if, if an adult talked to me and I was standing next to my mom or my dad, and, and if they asked me a question, if I said, yeah, they're going to smack me in the face. What do you mean, yeah? I'm sorry. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. And it just teaches the kids to respect authority because there's no, no respect. And, and y'all know that, that that's not to, to, for my ego. Okay, you know that. Don't you? You know that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> but listen, you don't call, you know, I, I, I may just have y'all start calling me Father Charles. Uh, no, sir. No, sir. <laughs> um, Verse 10, uh, neither be called master, for one is your master, even Christ. All right, and pastors do this. Pastors want to be elevated. Uh, pastors want to, uh, we, I was talking to Pastor Allen about uh, a couple of years ago, we went to uh, someone that we know, uh, and, and they, they came down from uh, out of state to, to do a little, uh, uh, I don't know what it was, a preaching. And, and uh, there, there was about 30 or 40 people, most of them relatives. And, and uh, so when the preaching was over, uh, uh, you know, an, an unknown like me, and uh, so I went through there and I went to his wife and I said, hey, where's he at? I want to see it. And they said, oh no, security had to take him and put him in the room. And I'm like, we have more people in our church than you do. You've only got eight or ten people. You're not, you know, you're not some well-known pastor. There hasn't been any threats to your life. Everybody in here is either a close friend or, or a relative, and security has to. But see, it's just that, you know, uh, we have to get him out of here. And, 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 and they, they wanted to where there was a man there. And as soon as he finishes preaching, you know, it's just like, we got to get you out of here. We gotta, and, and it's just to make me look important, you know. Uh, give me a break. Give me a break. Verse 11, but he that is greatest among you shall be your servant, and whatsoever uh, shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Are you ready? Are you ready? Here we go. Put your seatbelts on. Put your seatbelts on. And don't you dare, all, all the young men up here are going, yep, putting their seatbelts on. Get ready. You're going for a joy ride. And don't you tell me that uh, following Jesus' example that we're not supposed to judge. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, uh, and uh, you are hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are in, uh, entering in, uh, because of legalism. Verse 14, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses, and for a penance, pretense, uh, make a long prayer. Therefore you shall be received the, the greater damnation. Uh, 15, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, 
hypocrites. You notice all this is written in red, right? So this is Jesus. 15 again. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, for you compass sea and land to make one proselyte, that's to get someone saved. So I'm going to substitute that word for someone saved when I read it again, uh, it's just so you'll understand what it says. Woe unto you, scribes, 15. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you get someone, uh, for you go across the land and the sea to get one person saved, and when he is saved, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Now let me let me let me stop right there for a second. We have to be careful because if if Brother Kanye West is not discipled correctly, and if he is discipled by the wrong people, and he receives another Jesus, and he receives another spirit, and he receives another gospel, since he is famous, he's going to preach. What is he going to preach? He's going to preach what is in his heart, what he's been taught. And if he has taught the wrong thing, his disciples, there's nothing wrong with saying his disciples because y'all are my disciples as I follow God. He, they are going to, it's going to be just like this. If he receives the false message and if he doesn't test the spirit and if he receives that false message, then he, he, he is in danger of going to hell and every person that hears him and believes him, that's what he's saying, you're going to hell and you're taking all these other people to hell with you. That's why it's important that Kanye or anybody else has got to be discipled. All right. Woe unto you, 16, woe unto you blind guys which say, whosoever shall swear by the temple is nothing, but whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. Look at 17. <laughs> you fools and blind, for who, whether is greater, the gold or the temple, <clears throat> that sanctifies the gold. So they're saying, you, you think the gold is more important. You think the money is more important. Huh? Huh? Is that what you think? And Jesus is saying the temple is more important. Why is that? The temple is just a building. But here, at this time in a, a biblical history, the temple was the dwelling place of God. You see? He, he was behind the bell. That was God's house. What did Jehoshaphat say when the enemy came and he went to the temple? And he said, your name is written in this place. This is your house. See? And so Jesus is saying, you, you swear, but you think the gold's more important? It's this temple. This is the dwelling place of my father. This is the dwelling place of God. Now, not anymore. When Jesus gave up the spirit on the cross, the bell was rent. God said, I'll no longer live in this temple. I will live among my people. See, and so right now, if God could open our spiritual eyes, we know that God is omnipotent. He's all powerful. We know that God, now get this, he is omnipresent, which means God is everywhere at once. And if God would open our spiritual eyes, you would see God sitting there and maybe even taking notes. Because I want to make sure this guy's getting it right, because if not, I'm going to correct him. And so God, God is here. God's here. God is here. Every service, God's here. Friday, Tuesday's prayer. God is here. God is here. I'm telling you. And he's keeping track. He's keeping track. All right. Now here we go. Here we go. Okay, 21. And whosoever shall swear by the temple sweareth by it and by him that dwelleth in it. See? He's saying, you think the gold that, that's like God is saying to the, to the preachers of today, the prosperity gospel. You think that's what it, what's important? Is, 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 is being worth $50 million and having a $10 million home and five jets? Is that what you think is important? And God is saying that's not what is important. It's what's important is humbling yourself at the altar, preaching the, the truth. Remember I told you that Jesus went into the temple and said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for He has called me. And He goes on, and it says when He finished that, He closed it and He gave it back. And He said, this is how it's done. This is what you're supposed to do. This is the message that you preach. 22, and he that shall swear by heaven sweareth by the throne of God, and by him sitteth thereon. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, <coughs> you hypocrites, for you pay tithe, of mint and anise, uh, that, that is uh, uh, like a dill, it's uh, uh, like a plant, I think, and, uh, and uh, common, but you have omitted or gone over the we weightier matters of the law. Judgment, 
mercy, faith, and ought you to be done and not leave the other undone. Now, now, now this, uh, some people say the tithe is not for today. I want to just throw this in here. All right. And so as what Jesus is saying, yeah, you pay the tithe and you tell the people, he's saying your whole focus is on money. Would you, I, I'm telling you, some of these prosperity pastors are good. They're good because they can take any scripture out of the Bible and somehow or another make it about sending me money. They're good. There's, there's an art to that. <clears throat> so Jesus is saying you're doing that, but you're forgetting the other things that are important. And then, just to kick it in, he says, though, uh, uh, and not to leave the other undone. So he's saying, yeah, you, you need to take the tithe. But you gotta, you got to preach on the other stuff too. How long do we, do we take, uh, does it take us to take up a tithe? Not very long. We don't, we, uh, that's not where our emphasis is. See, we got other, other things that we need to preach on. All right, not just the tithe. 24, you blind guides would strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Verse 25, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! For you make clean the outside of the cup of the platter, but within they're full of extortion and excuses. You're gonna, you, you, can, you can turn on the TV and see some of the prosperity preachers and, and they've got on, I don't know, their $500 suits and, and, and they're like this and they look so good. But if God could give us the eye, spiritual eyes to see inside of them and see their spirit and see their soul and see their dark, dark heart and see what they're like. Uh, the, uh, I, I, he put it out there. It was on national TV. So I'm just, uh, 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 what is inside of them? Uh, 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 there was a, a reporter uh, from, I can't remember who, where she was from, uh, but there was a reporter that approached Kenneth Copeland about one of his last chests that he got. And he was fixing to get into his big uh, SUV. And uh, he had the door open. And he was standing up on there. And she came and she asked. And she said, uh, uh, ask him a question, something about, uh, do you, th uh, you need to answer to the people that give you money? And I'm telling you something. He became demon possessed. You say, well, oh, no, he didn't. If you don't want to put this video out, you don't have it. But he became demon-possessed. How many of you saw that video? You saw that video. You, you need to Google it and look it up. Because his whole face became demonic. And he gritted his teeth and he told her, don't you ever say that again. Ever. And then he goes, see, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And it, she back, it scared her. She got quiet for just a second. If, God, if we could see the inside of them. I, listen, I say, that, I say this with humility. If God would allow you to see inside of my heart and my spirit for you, you would be amazed at the love that I have for you. You would be amazed at how much I want to please God. Just humbly, just a little, little country preacher. How I want to please God. How I want all of us to go to heaven. See, how I want all of us healed. How all of us, I want us to have our financial needs met, have good marriages. I want that. That's what's inside of me. I have never taken a salary from this. You know, the Apostle Paul said, I've never done anything wrong to you. See? And, and, and Paul talked about giving him money for his missionary trip. But one of the churches, he said, I'm not going to take any money from you because I want you to know my heart. Why I'm doing this, not for the money. Okay, let's get back to this. 24. You blind guys would strain. Oh, I'm sorry. 26. You, uh, you blind Pharisees cleanse first that it was in the cup and platter that the outside of them may be clean also. All right. And he's talking about the appearance of your heart, the appearance on your outside. 27. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you're like unto whitest set sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful. It's like the outside of a building or, or a temple. But on the inside, they're full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanliness. Verse 28. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within you're full of hypocrisy and iniquity. And we're not supposed to judge. Now, we don't go looking for it, but when it shows up, you need to tell people, don't listen to that preacher. Don't listen to that message. That message is false. And you should be able to back that up with the scriptures. Okay, turn over to 2 Corinthians eleven thirteen. 13. The rest of the, these scriptures are going to be fairly short. Now, the thing that scares me about Kanye is the people that he's going to be exposed to uh, over the next several months 
uh, and maybe even a year or two. Uh, you know, popular preachers, famous preachers, uh, and, and he has to be careful because he has to guard the, his heart at all costs. He has to make sure that what he's putting in there uh, is, is proper. And, and, and you say, well, you know, I just agree with, disagree with you. The, these famous preachers say that they're preachers. They have a Bible when they get up there and when they speak. You know, I, I've, I've seen them do good things. You know, how, Pastor, how can you talk bad about this preacher and his message? He just gave a million dollars to the homeless people. How can you say he's a, a false preacher? You know? 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13. You know, he looks good and he sounds good, but who is discipling Kanye? For such are false apostles, deceitful workers. Now listen to me. Transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel. For even Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Verse 15. Therefore, it's no great wonder that if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. You can't look at somebody on the outside. You know, you, you can have a pastor. Listen, uh, 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 an unsaved person gives millions of dollars in charity. Don't, don't, you, you, you can't, you can't, I hate to say judge, but you can't judge a message to see if it's true, you know, uh, or, or judge a preacher by the outward. But it's what you have to do is listen to the message and, and then test them to make sure they're of God and, and pray about it. You see what I'm saying? Okay, real quick, turn over to, uh, to the right to Galatians 6.19. We got this one and one more. Galatians 6.19. Now, Kanye West, in his interview with Joel Osteen, said that I am the greatest artist that God has ever made. Now, some people say, well, he was just joking. Okay, it doesn't matter if you're joking or not. Okay, I can get up here and preach a false message and then say, oh, I was just joking. Okay, and you're going to hear everything out of that false message except I was joking. And, and I give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he was joking. But the thing is, he shouldn't have said it. He shouldn't have said it. Because it's what, it, Kanye has this problem from, because he's, from, he's in the Hollywood crowd. You have to understand this. this. This is why the Apostle Paul was an important man. His father, he said, I'm a Pharisee and a son of a Pharisee. He had money. He had prestige. When, people probably acknowledged him. Uh, when he wrote in, even though Paul was short and bald and he didn't have a comely appearance, but because of who he was, he would write in with pride and have his head up, you know, uh, he was somebody. And, and, and then when he had that, uh, uh, that, that encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus, guess, guess what? It was a true conversion, and he said, I am nothing. I am nothing. I'm nothing without God. Absolutely nothing. All right? And, and so rather than Kanye come out, I would rather him say, you know, Joel, I've got millions and millions of dollars. I've got, I've got deals with records. I've got a big mansion. I've got everything. But you know what, Joel? None of this matters. None of this matters. It's God. I know he has said that too, but he shouldn't have said what he said. I'm just judging what he said. I'm not judging him. See, you've got to get some humility about you. Okay, and so let's see what God has to say about that. I'm the greatest artist ever made. Uh, Galatians chapter 5. Is that what I said? I didn't say chapter 5? No. I said 6? Okay, but don't go to 6. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Are you ready? It says, Now the works of the flesh are this, are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, uh, variance, which is a, a, a opposing authority, uh, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, which are rebelling against authority, heresies, uh, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I did tell you in the past, that they, switch to, that they which do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. All right, and so it doesn't matter if these people say they're a Christian or if they're not a Christian. This is, this is the fruit. This is what you will see from them. There's so many famous preachers have had extramarital affairs. 
Uh, they have uh, uh, skimmed money. Uh, they live in big mansions off the money that's given to the church uh, and all that. It, that's their fruits, okay? Is that of God? No, it's, no that's not of God. Saying that I am, God made me the greatest is not of God. So what is of God? What, what, if, if, if we told Paul, paint us a picture of what a true believer and follower of Jesus is. Verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Verse 23, what's the first word? Huh? Say it loud. Meekness. You know what meekness is? Kanye should have said, you know, you know, I've, I've had a lot of success in my singing. And you know why? Because God has blessed me. Because God has blessed me. Listen, I stand behind this pulpit. Every time I come in here, I get nervous and, and I have the fear of God. Because I'm like, you know, God, I, I would never choose me to do this. Never. I am so unworthy to stand up here and preach your word. I'm so unworthy. And I am. And, and, and listen, God will tell you that, yeah, you're unworthy. That's okay. I'll make it right. Just surrender to me. Okay, 23 again. Meekness, temperance, we're almost through. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with affections and lust. See? The old Kanye should be dead and buried. And the new Kanye should be resurrected. Now, listen, you understand what I'm saying? Someone needs to be teaching this to Kanye. You see what I'm saying? Now, now the meekness and the fruit of the Spirit should come. Right? I, mean, I mean, immediately, Kanye should, should, the Holy Spirit, should, as soon as it comes to dwell in him, he should say, wow, I've got all this because God has blessed me. I've got all of this. But other than that, he has to be taught. I don't want, I don't want him to be taught that you know, Conway, you, you, uh, Kanye, you, you're worth about, I don't know how much he's worth, 20 million now. But listen, listen, brother, listen. You can go around to some of these churches, you'll be worth 40 million, 50 million. The sky's the limit. Just listen to me. Preach what I tell you to preach. See what I'm saying? He has to be taught that. If we, uh, 25, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit let us walk in the Spirit. 26. Let us not be desirous of vain glory. God has made me the greatest. Provoking one another and envying one another. Look at chapter 6, verse 1. Here, th this is, again, should we judge. But if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest ye also be tempted. Now, I'm going to close with this. Turn over to 1 uh, Timothy chapter 3. This is my closing. First Timothy, raise your hand. First Timothy chapter three. Paul is, uh, Paul is on his deathbed, not on his deathbed, but he's pretty, pretty close to dying. He's not bedridden. Uh, and he is preparing Timothy to take his place. Uh, Timothy was taught the true gospel by his mother and his grandmother. Uh, and, and, and so Paul is preparing him and giving him some final instructions, okay? Now, when you hear the word uh, a, a bishop or some, something like that, he's talking about uh, uh, someone in the capacity of a pastor or a preacher that takes the pulpit, okay? So 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. I'm going to go real fast. This is the true saying. If a man desires the office of a bishop, or you might say to stand behind the pulpit, he desires a good work. See? It's a good thing that I stand up here. It's a good thing that I preach the truth to you. It's a good thing. God's saying, that's a whole lot better than, you, remember I told you, it's better to be in church than it is to be in jail. What is better for me to preach the truth than it is for me to preach the, the, a false gospel to you, all right, because I'm going to have to answer to whatever I preach. <clears throat> so, verse 2, a bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. Now, what that means, one wife, uh, means that uh, his wife should not be a hypocrite or a gossiper or a troublemaker, okay? <clears throat> have different personalities like that. Uh, a bishop then, verse 2, must be a blameless a husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, good to hospitality, able to teach. Verse 3, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy, uh, 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 a filthy lucre. <laughs> what? You see what it's saying? Not be greedy. Not be greedy. All right? But patient, not a brawler or covetous. 
Look at verse 4. One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. You need to be a good father. You need to be a good father. You need to be a good husband. If a, verse 5. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Are you ready for this? Verse 6. Not a novice or a beginner, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Do you understand what that's saying? That would, that would be like if there was a chain of events where here I am, we, we got, I don't know, maybe 25 people in here, but something happened and somebody say, hey, I'm going to put you on, on TV free. <clears throat> free. <clears throat> I'll give you one, one, two, three services on TV. We'll pay for it. And so I do that. And for some reason or another, millions of people start writing in <clears throat> and they say, man, this is awesome. We want to sign you to a contract. We want to put you on TV full time and do all this kind of stuff. See? It would be hard to do, but the best thing to do is to say, I don't want that. I'm a local pastor. I don't want that. I'll go on TV every once in a while, but I don't want that. Because that can corrupt a person, see? And, and uh, now, now, if, if, if with me, I, I'm, I'm going to be 68 here in, in a few weeks. I, I, I wear a size 32 waist uh, in, in pants. And uh, uh, January 5th, mark that down, I think it's a Sunday. But anyhow, <laughs> anyhow I'll... I'll I'll remind you. But listen, I, I have no desire to meet Joel Osteen, Kenneth Copeland, Joyce Myers. I, I have no desire. I have no desire to meet famous movie stars, politicians. I have no desire to do that. Why? To me, they're, 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 just, they're just people. They're just people. You know? and, and we seek Christian advice from entertainers. You know? and, and we pay them millions of dollars to act like other people. Oh, boy. I'm almost finished. Okay, verse 6 again. Not a novice, uh, but being lifted up with pride, he may fall into condemnation of the devil. Verse 7. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and snare of the devil. Likewise, verse 8, he must, must the deacons be uh, grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy, a filthy lucre. Second time he t said uh, that, that he's not be greedy with money. Holding the ministry of our faith in pure conscience and let those also first be proved. Then let them use the office of a deacon being found blameless. Verse 11, 12, and 13, and that'll be my closing. Even so, must their wives be grave, not slanderers, sober, faithful in all things. Let the deacons be the husband of one wife, ruling their children and their own house well. Second time he talked about that. And here's my closing. For uh, they that have used the office of a deacon well purchase to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. What is my reward for standing behind this pulpit? Now I'm speaking for myself, but you know, uh, our leaders have taken the pulpit, but I'm, I'm speaking for myself. Well, I have a reward for standing up here and doing this. You know what my reward is? To stand before a sovereign God and for God to say, well done, good and faithful servant. You preached exactly what I wanted you to preach. You said exactly what I wanted you to say. You were obedient to me. Am I, I, now, am I perfect as a man? No, not at all. But I want to be perfect in the position. You might say a deacon, a preacher. I want to be, perf I want to be a perfect preacher. See, I, I may not be perfect to you, but that's okay. I want to be perfect to God. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? Father, I just thank you, Lord. You know, Father, as I, I, I lift up Kanye West to you again, Father, you know, I just get overwhelmed when I was doing this. I get overwhelmed with love for him and compassion for him. And, you know, Father, I want him to succeed uh, in you, uh, not in himself, but in you. Uh, you know, Father, I, I want to see him humble himself. Uh, you know, he, we, we just saw uh, this weekend uh, that he bought a big uh, uh, mansion out in, out in the almost in the desert of Wyoming or something. And, uh, you know, Father, let, uh, let him move out of Hollywood and L.A. and out of that area and let him raise his family out there in, in a play. There's nothing wrong with him having a mansion, uh, but let him, let him be out there with just you and him, praise God, and, and the family and get him away from all, all these outside influences, Father. I don't care who you are. The, the external things are going to influence you. And, and, and you know, Father, uh, let him just kind of disappear 
<clears throat> for, for a couple of years uh, and, and, and let, him, uh, let him continue his Christian music, but let him disappear and let him get hooked up with a pastor that is going to disciple him uh, and make him a true disciple, praise God. Uh, and, and Father, uh, give him all those things that are the fruit of the Spirit, praise God. And we pray for him again to be successful in you. We love him and we embrace him as a brother in Christ. But Father, we're going to watch his message and watch what he says and watch what he does. And we're going to pray for the best, but we're going to watch him and we're going to test the spirits, praise God. And so strengthen him, Father, and surround him with good godly people, Father, in the powerful name of your son, Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Amen.